Hey friends, Mike the Fit Farmer here and this is another weekly installment of Growing Greens All Year. Yes, each week for 52 weeks this year I'm going to be sharing with you what I'm doing to grow greens throughout the year. Yep, to have greens growing in my garden, on my farm, where I can harvest them any day of the year that I want to. Well, this week, even though spring has officially started, we have experienced both winter and summer-like temperatures all in the same week. Just the other day, it was 84 degrees here, and today, it's snowing. It is what it is at this time of year. But uh, I'm out here harvesting some lettuce and trying to get it done before it starts snowing on me too much. But I just wanted to show you the snow. But I gotta get back to it and get this job done. I told you in a previous vlog that my tot soy, well, it went straight to flowering and we really didn't get many leaves from it. However, I decided not to pull it out. Lacey tried the flowers and threw them in some of our salad mix and I was like, whoa, it's pretty good. So as I was harvesting the flowers from the tot soy, I noticed ice pellets began to come down. I was like, whoa, this is even more interesting. So I was doing what I could to harvest that. And at the time I was harvesting the tatsoi flowers and some kale and uh, also some arugula. I like to throw that in with our lettuce and some of our spinach because some of those flavors really just help bring out a more balanced and a more flavorful salad. Uh, especially sometimes if you're dealing with some lettuces that can be slightly bitter or some people might find slightly bitter. Uh, what they have historically done with that is they'll throw in things like arugula, something that's spicy to kind of throw off. That bitter flavor so after I was harvesting that stuff I went inside the caterpillar tunnel where uh, it was neat to see the the ice pellets and uh, beginning to form and shape on the caterpillar tunnel but at least I was out of this wintry weather and was thankful for that and uh, I was almost just about done at that point I actually uh, Josiah was helping me out and uh, after we got it done just had to do a little dance because I was happy to get this first part of it done. After that, I took our salad mix up to our wash and pack station. Washed it and dried it and one of the things that I've been noticing with drying our salad mix I, I plan to convert our washing machine that we have up there in the wash and pack station to a salad spinner so make sure you stay tuned for that hopefully we can get that done pretty soon but uh, in, under our drying table we have a high velocity fan and then we'll put in our our harvesting baskets and then in there we'll have our lettuce that we'll be drying and then as it's drying, one of the things I've noticed before is that wind, because it's such high velocity, sometimes it'll be shooting lettuce out of it. So what I like to do is I like to put a screen over top of the harvesting basket just to keep the lettuce inside from blowing all out. Despite it being cold, I got all of that harvested and the snow and ice eventually stopped. And right at the end of the day, it finally hit a temperature spike. I don't know how fast the temperature just spiked up, but it actually did reach 52 degrees right there at, I don't know if it was four o'clock, five o'clock, somewhere around there. I was like, wow, it actually made it to 52 degrees. And, and you couldn't even tell that it had snowed or had iced at all that day. It was, it's pretty interesting. It's like you had multiple seasons all in one day. So uh, thankful for that. But earlier this week, we had the temperatures, they were warm, they were enjoyable, and that was when I got to use the excavator. I had been waiting for over a year to use this excavator to really finish a number of things that I had really been wanting to finish in the garden and on the farm. Since it had been so long since I had access to this excavator, I was really excited and really wanted to try to knock out as much as I could with using it while I had it. And there were basically three areas that I really wanted to work on. The first area that I wanted to work on is what I call now 
my sun garden. It's a garden area where uh, it has a number of beds where it gets most of the sun through, throughout the year. So in that garden, I like to have uh, things such as peppers, cucumbers, uh, eggplant, things that really need a lot of sun. But here recently, since I didn't have access to the excavator, I went ahead and terraced part of the land that is lead, that leads up to that garden. Uh, for those of you who don't know, our property is on a slope, so I've really been working hard on terracing the land so that way water flows appropriately and it doesn't wash things away. And that was one of the things that I was experiencing right here in, at the top of the sun garden is I had the land was sloped and then I had my bed right here and the water was just washing seed and, and washing out our plants. So what I did is I went ahead and dug out part of that land, made it flat so there's a walkway. And so that way water can channel away from this, this raised bed here without washing seed and washing the plants away. But I didn't get an opportunity to finish it just because working and doing it by hand is so strenuous. Uh, I was really happy to bring in the excavator to finish the job because right there at the walkway, I, since I made that terrace by hand, it still had a step and it still just needed some refinement. So bring it, I brought the excavator over to this area and worked on digging out the bank because I want to have an area where we're doing another raised bed project. We'll have to show you in a little bit. And then I wanted to slope out where that step was so it would just gradually decrease It'll just be a nice smooth area to walk in instead of having to make this giant step to get from one area to another. So I took the excavator and began digging it out and working on improving this area, moving the soil over to another area that we needed it in. So I got pretty much what we could do done there. And then the rest that was just that the excavator couldn't do, Ben and I had to do it by hand. After we got done with mostly what I wanted to get done in the sun garden, Next, we moved over to the main market garden. And I'd asked Ben and Lacey and the kids to move the tarp off the area that I was getting ready to work on in the back side of the market garden. And as I'm inching and creeping over, I was noticing they're, they're not really doing anything. And I was wondering, what are they doing? Come to find out, there was a snake under the tarp. So after the snake scurried away, they moved the tarp away and then I moved the excavator on in and began working on this area in the back side of the garden and I really had been wanting to get this done because it helps create a walkway that just makes easy transition for maintaining the, the grass and everything else as far as transporting trays and anything you may need into the garden. It just makes all of that easier and more efficiently. But this time Micah really wanted to ride on the excavator with me. So I let him. And as I was making some pretty good progress on the excavator with this backside of the garden, digging out that walkway, Michael was having a good time, but I was noticing as the machine was vibrating, he was just like getting sleepier and sleepier. And uh, well, it's one of the things I've noticed, if you're not operating it, it vibrates and the sound that it makes, it, it does kind of make you just a little bit sleepy. <laughs> So right here what I'm doing is I'm digging out this area which I'm trying to finish off the main walkway that we have coming into the back side of the garden. And I'm digging it out, moving this dirt from here, placing it over to this section to where I am going to be setting up some smaller raised beds. But digging this out and making this walkway more open will allow me to be able to cut the grass and manage the, the area more appropriately and be able to actually take parts and things like that inside of it. So, here we go. What are y'all doing? And then the last but most challenging area 
was the third area that I was working on and it was still in the main market garden but it was also digging out a walkway however where I needed to move the soil on this part was actually inside the caterpillar tunnel and man I really had to focus this time I, I, I'm glad that the other areas gave me an opportunity to warm up and and shake off the rustiness that I'd had from not using the excavator for some time but Ugh, it was intense and the focus that I had to have and making sure I didn't hit any of our hoops and our caterpillar tongue. And gradually I was making some pretty good progress. I would dig out some of the dirt and soil, put it inside the caterpillar tunnel carefully, dig it out, put it in, and then whew, bang! I just barely grazed one of the hoops, but whew, nothing was wrong. Kept rolling on. And finally got done after all that intense focus, and I was like, whoo! Who would think you'd be so tired after sitting on a machine for pretty much all day? But having that focus really did kind of wear me out just a little bit. But I was so thankful to get these areas done and have things where you can move around the garden much easier and we can divert the water flow easier. And I know some of you had said before, Mike, you should have done some of this a long time ago. You should have done some of this a long time ago. I actually have been gradually and incrementally uh, terracing these areas and refining where I have them terraced. Uh, it's just a process when you don't have a machine like this excavator. So I was really thankful and have been really thankful that I had the opportunity to, to use this excavator. And man, this will help things out even more. One to two times a week, our friend named Ben comes helps us out on the farm. And he and his family are in the process of setting up their homestead. And this young man is learning a lot of different skills that will help him and enable him to be successful on his homestead with his family. And I told him earlier in the day, I said, well, at the end of the day, we, we get a lot of these tasks done. I'm going to teach you how to use the excavator. And at the end of the day, he had the opportunity to do just that. And as he was beginning to use it, I could tell his focus really zeroed in and he was really intense in trying to make sure he got it right. So Ben had the opportunity to do that. He was scooping up in an area that I told him, safe for you to work on it right here, scooping up some of the dirt, picking it up and moving it over and making a pile somewhere else. And he was doing a great job. But since it was the end of the day, I was kind of getting tired and I began to feel what Michael was feeling earlier. I was kind of nodding off a little bit. It's like, whoa, just that vibration of the machine is like, I don't know, it's like you're in a a crib or something you're just like a little baby just getting rocked to sleep it it kind of has that vibration feel to you and in the hum too it just just makes you want to go to sleep i also want to mention that if any of you are ever around anyone operating a large piece of equipment like this ex excavator here make sure you stay way back and make sure that you're in a spot that they know that you are in because there's a number of blind spots on most equipment that people are using and they're also focused on the job at hand so a lot of times you can't see people who are around you and if they come close you really can't see them and if somebody is struck by this equipment it could be a serious injury or even fatality so make sure you stay back and our kids were staying way back they love watching uh, the excavator and most of the construction equipment being put to use as most kids do but they also made sure that they stayed back and safe and out of the way 
Well, that's it for this vlog. Stay tuned next week for another week of Growing Greens year-round and give you a little bit of insight of some of the things that we're doing in our garden. Also, if you have any questions, comments, things that you may want for me to cover in upcoming videos, please let me know. Also, the Homesteading Life Conference in Hannibal, Missouri is halfway sold out and seating is very, very limited. So, if you haven't already, go ahead and purchase your tickets now and you can come meet me and the rest of my family in Hannibal, Missouri. Well, that's it for today. We'll see you next time and roll on.